Hello everyone, this is the Cynical Romanian and today I've got a full tank review for you on the tier 7 Chinese main battle tank, the Type 90-2 or Mark II for the sake of convenience I'm just gonna call it the Type 90 and if you have no intention of playing this tank then stick around anyway and I'll show you how to effectively take it out on the battlefield alright, here we are in the Chinese main battle tank tree which you can unlock by doing the required mission or if you're lazy lazy like me by buying this thing the WZ1224 well what can we say about the Chinese main battle tank tree well it's boring it's shit but mostly boring the first three tanks in the tree are just there's no variety the tier 4 the type 69 uh, and the type the tier 5 the type 80 are basically just uh, modernized versions of the type 59 and they play pretty much identically and well also they're pretty much outperformed uh, by the russian equivalents the t62 the t64 and the t72 in pretty much every single respect which means the only real, um, the first, actually I should say, the first real upgrade to this tree is this thing, the Type 85-2M, which is uh, the, the Chinese's first attempt at designing their own main battle tank. In armor warfare it's, well it's not, it's not bad, but it's not amazing either, mobility wise it's, about the same as a Leopard 2 AV DPM wise it's about the s well actually it's lower than the, than a T72 which is ironic because it has exactly the same reload time but with lower alpha damage go figure it actually has the second highest uh, penetration of uh, all well actually no it has the third highest uh, with the highest being <coughs> the T72 then the MBT70 which is a premium tank so I don't know if I should include it and there's then then there's this this thing with if I'm not mistaken 370 something penetration which basically means it has more the, the, the more penetration than all the others the Leopard 2 AV the XM1 so yeah Armor wise, it's okay, I guess nothing special. Sides and rear are shit. And the uh, hold down, it's actually pretty good. If you're not hold down, well, this, they, they basically shoot it in the lower plate. You will pretty much penetrate it every single time. The lower plate on this tank is there pretty much just to keep the driver from falling out of the tank. But. This tank is not why we're here today. Today we're here to talk about this beauty, this thing right here in all its fully upgraded glory, the Type 90. So, for the purposes of this review I'm gonna compare it to the Russian T-80 because, well, if you take a look here, they basically <laughs> pretty much have the same exact gun. So right off the bat what do we see uh, uh, by the way si a quick side note um, both tanks are fully upgraded retrofitted and uh, with uh, level 4 crews also as, co as a commander I use this beauty right here Freya Hojberg whatever I'm sorry I'm pretty much I'm sure I butchered her name Pretty much because of uh, take aim and uh, fire when ready, which increases the DPMs uh, and uh, aim time of the tank significantly. And as we all know in naval warfare, generally main battle tanks have real big problems with uh, DPM and uh, aim time, aim time especially. especially. So let's uh, let's see what we can see. Right off the bat, damage-wise, 
incredibly 534 damage penetration is absolutely incredible 509 millimeters which is higher than the t80 by uh, eight millimeters the t80 used to be the highest penetration main battle tank at tier 7 but now it got dethroned by the type 90. Uh, alpha damage wise 534 which is 34 damage less than the t80 which is well it's not that big of a deal honestly it's almost the same dpm wise as you can see damage per minute is absolutely incredible it's basically tier 8 equivalent DPM with 4,409 with a 7.27 round a minute, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, reload time. As you can see, the T80 comes ahead at 4,690 DPM, which is slightly more because of the slightly bigger alpha damage, but it's not that big, not that big of a difference. It's not that big of a deal. Hit points wise it's somewhere between the Leopard 2 and the M1 Abrams. Uh, also hit points obviously depend on your retrofit layout. It comes in at uh, with my layout it comes in at uh, 2252 hit points which is uh, a bit higher than the T80 at two, which has 2144. Mobility, as you can see, top speed 70.20 km per hour with a 7.65 uh, acceleration speed. It's actually, and uh, it doesn't show the track traverse, but it's actually, I can tell you from playing this thing, it's actually more mobile than the T80, which is, uh, which previously used to be the most mobile tier 7 main battle tank in the game with uh, as you can see 68.40 kilometers per hour top speed and 7.30 second uh, uh, acceleration the acceleration on the t80 is actually a bit better but uh, well the the tops the top speeds are pretty much only when going downhill or at a small incline basically on flat terrain most tanks including the T80 and the Type 90 will go at a fairly average 50, 50 something kilometers per hour. Camouflage obviously is non-existent. Main battle tanks in this game, as soon as they fire, they get spotted. It's simple, not complicated. The Type 90 has a better view range at 360 meters view range. The T80 is blind as a bat. At 335 as you can see gun depression it has one more degree of gun depression over the front and the side of the tank very important side note do not do not try to aim your gun over the back of the tank your gun depression is basically zero you will not be able to hit anything which means if you get outflanked by someone turn your tank as fast as possible do not do not stay still and try to turn only your turret because you will not be able to hit anything turret reverse speed is an incredible 40.41 degrees per second which comes in second uh, behind the t80 which has a 46.40 degrees per second uh, turret reverse both turret traverses are incredible but the real this is where the magic happens with this tank which, which is why it's pretty much the best accuracy spread 0 0.11 it's absolutely incredible what this means is basically you can take snapshots you can it's, you also can, uh, because of the accuracy speed, you, you can also fire on the move. It's something to keep in mind. And the aim timer, as you can see, 2.12 seconds. It just completely outshines the T80, which has an accuracy spread of 0 0.14 and an aim time of 2.65 seconds. Right, 
ammo layout well i go with um, 40 uh, APDS, 6 as you can see, 6 uh, high explosive anti tech and 10 APGMs. Ammo layouts are completely uh, subjective. You go with whatever you want. Additionally, for example, if you play only, uh, only PVE, you can, for example, take more uh, high explosive anti tanks. Uh, uh, this tank also has. Uh, a high explosive but well honestly I almost never used it it's really not that good also the uh, this tank has high ammo, ca ammo capacity than the T80 by about 10 rounds as you can see the T80 same ammo layout 30 uh, APDS 6 uh, hit and 10 ATGMs unfortunately uh, has 10 less ammo uh, capacity on the primary ammo tab right here so this is less important but mostly ammo capacity is only relevant in PvE games because <laughs> you're never I mean you're never gonna fire 40 like 46 rounds and 10 ATGMs in a PvP game it's ju it just never it's not gonna happen so what about the armor is it any good well let's take a look the armor well it's it's only concentrated at the front of the tank the side of the tank as you can see here 117 millimeters the rear of the tank 78 millimeters basically what this means is do not get outflanked because you're gonna get penetrated even by armor fighting vehicles shooting uh, auto cannons that's it gameplay wise it's simple keep the front of uh, your tank to the enemy that's it that's it simple Hey, can we go home now? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, against shape charge, as you can see, unfortunately and ironically, the ERA bricks do not cover the biggest weak point of the tank, which is the lower plate. It only covers the upper plate and the nose of the front of the tank, basically right here, as you can see, and uh, well, I guess you can call them the cheeks of the turret, as you as you can see here which gives it a pretty pretty nice um, cool down profile if you can go cool down in this thing you are very very hard to penetrate even with high tier basically tier 8 and tier, uh, tier 7 tier 8 and tier 9 80 gems you can pull off uh, absorbs and bounces because of the ERA bricks uh, from the side again it offers non-existent protection the, the difference between versus AP and shape charge is negligible at best as you can see here at the side of the tank 180 millimeters at the rear 120 and even the lowest tier ATGMs have at least 500, about five, 500 millimeters of penetration which means like I said, don't get flanked. That's it. And the tank doesn't have any cage uh, and, or any active protective or um, passive protective system. So ATGMs are, are a problem if you get flanked. So don't. Armor wise, like I said, it's somewhere around uh, the same armor as an Abrams. But I guess you could say it comes ahead because uh, simply because of the ERA bricks which uh, offer it an extra layer of protection uh, as obviously especially against AT ATGMs but also against uh, kinetic penetrators frontally it has two weak spots the biggest uh, obvious weak spot is the lower plate as you can see 416 equivalent ar uh, armor millimeters of protection if you angle the tank if you wiggle the front of the tank the protection like this 
the protection can go up to 440 450 millimeter plus but as soon as you encounter tanks which have 500 plus millimeters you have you have no chance of bouncing shots they will go through your lower plate over and over you don't have, you don't even have to aim your shots so keep an eye out for enemy T80s T type 90s and well pretty much every single tier 8 main battle tank in the game um, the second and uh, well it's a it's a much smaller weak uh, weak point is the uh, right here uh, the turret ring as you can see it's really really small it's a really small target it's not that easy to hit uh, and it's really only viable if you're in a face hug situation so if, so if you're face hugging with uh, with a type 90 shoot it here you'll need about 430 give or take millimeters to go through also if you're shooting at from a distance do not try to shoot it if your gun isn't the, doesn't have pinpoint accuracy you're most likely gonna hit one of the ERA bricks on the upper plate as you can see here or even the on the cheeks of the turret also it's worth mentioning that as you can see here 416 millimeters uh, uh, apparently on the side of the turret well I can tell you from experience it's not the entire side of the turret it, it only applies to this bit right here which also has um, uh, two ERA bricks which give you an extra layer of protection against ATGMs so if you see uh, this tank from uh, a side profile like this shoot its turret ba uh, uh, towards the back of the turret like from here to here which is where in most main battle tanks the ammo racks are uh, are stored so when you shoot it here you're most likely gonna damage it uh, it's amorax also small side note if you shoot uh, if you get shot in the lower plate there's a good chance your engine is gonna get damaged so to recap gameplay wise there's not there's not much to it keep your uh, keep the front of the tank uh, the front of your tank to your enemies go hold down as much as possible if you d do not have a position to go hold down in try to find a way to wedge the front of your tank basically back up into a small incline and wedge the front of your tank like this to the ground which basically what it does it hides your lower plate and next uh, all they're gonna have to shoot at it is the front of the is this bit right here which is covered in uh, in ERA bricks. Also, if uh, you are in an armor fighting vehicle and you want to take this tank out, first shoot uh, shoot uh, a round of high explosive uh, auto cannons at the front of the tank to take out all its ERA bricks, and then you can and you, and then you can uh, easily penetrate it with uh, ATGMs. So that's it. That's pretty much. It's it's a good tank. It's it's has uh, a nice blend of high DPM, high penetration, and uh, functional. I'm gonna call it functional armor. It's not overpowered like the uh, Challenger, and it's not fucking useless like the Abrams. It's somewhere in between. So that being said. We're now gonna go into a replay to showcase. I chose this replay uh, pretty much because it's, uh, it uh, has a bit of everything. It shows some of the weaknesses, some of the strong suits. So without further ado, let's uh, get into the gameplay. All right, here we are in the replay. Um, this uh, I actually had this game uh, the same day I started recording for this review unfortunately there's no there's no replay site for armor warfare yet 
so and I really don't have time to sit through hundreds dozens of emails with replays so I pretty much have to play the game uh, by my lonesome so yeah um, as you can see the matchup is pretty good is a favorable matchup it's uh, technically it's a tier 8 game uh, both teams have one tier 8 tank but most of the team I mean like 90, 95% of the team is uh, is tier 7 as you can see so which means it's for all intents and purposes a tier 7 game which is which is good I like that I really don't like some people prefer like to be top tier and then with lower tiers on, underneath them to uh, have easy games. I actually prefer challenges. Anyway, what's uh, the meta on this map is usually tank destroyers camp around this area here and provide overwatch for tanks which traverse all the way over here to this mound. This hill actually used to not be here, they changed the map. This area over here used to be flat. Uh, and pretty much anything that uh, drove down that hill over to this position right here would get completely destroyed by camping uh, AFDs and tank destroyers and heavy tanks and anything that was camping on the opposite hill right here. So yeah, and it's pretty much the same if you're over uh, on this side of the map, if you if you would uh, traverse from over there to over here, you'd get absolutely destroyed. And pretty much AFEs tend to buzz around the center of the map with main battle tanks clustered around this uh, refinery over in the center of the map, especially on encounter. But uh, yeah, enough about the map. Here it is, the Type 90, pretty tank. Ooh, I'm inside, dude. I mean, I know Asian people are small, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway. anyway, enough of uh, the shenanigans. Let's see what we can see. So usually. Usually I go over on the, to this position, especially if there's no artillery. So yeah, I like to sit up here and uh, snipe at tanks coming from that position, going over to this position over here. So yeah. Hello! Don't mind me, I'm just following you. Unfortunately, the current replay system doesn't have a uh, first person view, like sniper view, you won't, you won't be able to see what kind of ammunition I'm using, where I'm aiming. They said that they're gonna include that in the future version. Here's hoping. So. At first I thought I was gonna be alone, but uh, there is a T80 and the challenge. I, I'm pretty sure the challenger changes his mind and goes to the center. The refinery and uh, I get only the T80 with me over here. Okay, this position right here is a, is a good position, uh, but but you have to be careful of uh, and mostly tank destroyers camping around this position over here uh, which obviously gives them a really nice overwatch position sniping at the tanks so basically do not try not to Expose too much of your tank side the side of the tank even the front of the tank, especially if you're like Not in a challenger one or something like that As you're gonna see in a moment I spot the tank And I get rico I ricochet attack destroyer shot 
that was most likely the Centaur 120 or the LAV. I didn't see which. I'm trying to fire at the tanks coming on with this position over here. And actually you can fire all the way up to here. Which is I fire at that type uh, at the enemy type 90 I missed. Ah, and there it is, there it is, that shot right there came from, well he's not spotted uh, on my end of the, on my, end the, my end of the screen, but it was this guy over here, the, <laughs> this Abrams, and as you know, the Abrams with its most powerful APDS has 429 millimeters of penetration, and this is like... 400 meters give or take maybe more 500 and he was able to go through my lower plate Let's see if we can spot the hole. No uh, Either way he not only Penetrated my lower plate, but he also uh, Damaged my engine Like I said in the in the garage review shots through the lower plate of this tank have a tendency to damage the engine so yeah for the most part this is gonna be un uneventful I just keep poking this ridge hoping to spot something damage something I keep uh, bouncing shots and there it is there's the N590 and there is a 500 and there is another bounce from the pretty sure it's the Centaur 120 a nice 554 damage shot into the enemy type 90 and uh, look here this is what I was uh, this this is what I was talking about let's see this is what I was talking about previously you didn't have this hill right here uh, actually this is a nice shot of the stingray firing uh, and check this out tank destroyers well there's only one this is the LAV so that uh, the guy that was sniping at me is uh, the Centaur 120 this hill right here is infested with tank destroyers and the same goes for uh, the opposite hill as you can see here one two Three tank destroyers, campfest. Anyway, where's my tank? Where is my tanker? Why? Why don't I just do this? Such a noob. Anyway, yeah. Oh, and this is where I fire at the abrams. I miss. And he almost manages to escape. He's gonna get spotted in a moment. And I'm pretty sure I missed the Centaur 120, unfortunately. And there's the Abrams again. I bounce. And pretty sure he gets cracked right about, right about now. And the... Uh, worst position basically from that from my position i have shots at and you're gonna see in a moment i have shots in his uh, the rear of his tank his engine and there it is the guy is completely in. and he gets cracked again there it is and here comes sh my shot again and the engine, he's tracked, there's nothing. I'm pretty sure I hit him one more time. Or not? No. That was a nice shot, actually. To whoever I think. I think it was the T80 who tracked him twice. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I take a tank destroyer uh, hit on the side of the turret here. If 
I remember correctly, maybe. Uh, here comes the challenger one. And I bounce. I penetrate, uh, like I said, no first person view. But, uh, and there it is. That's, that's the shot from the challenger one. I bounce again. And this is where he gets greedy. He's gonna try. He lands at me. And he's dead. Penetrated his driver attachment again. Now I... I poke to take a punt. And there it is. 682 from the Centaur. That was a big shot. And reduces me to not that much HP. And... Pretty sure I... Now I kind of uh, go around in circles. I mean, I was I was afraid to take another shot from the Centaur. This guy over here providing is providing some spotting over for the enemy time destroyer. And there is another shot into the TAT. He's being, like I said, he's exposing his weak si side armor to the Centaur, which was absolutely destroying. Him. The, the enemy ram car is, was a little bit greedy there, tried to penetrate me with my with his auto cannon. I put a shot into his uh, zombie head. I like to call it a zombie head because that's what it is. You have to shoot it in the head to kill it. So I take a few, a few more pokes. Unfortunately, the situation in the middle of the map is not so well and there here comes the here comes the centaur on 120 and the ramka tries to push uh, tries to flank us and he does flank uh, up he does unfortunately flank the TAT he kills them and there it is now this is sort of important because here you see me back uh, reverse the tank uh, in front of the Centaur's gun and you might think what the hell is he doing and, but there's sort of method to my madness what I in what I wanted to do was to wedge to sandwich the tank destroyer between me and the map border and trap him basically to keep him in front of me Unfortunately, he was too fast and manages to flank. Pretty sure I think another shot or... No, he bounces. I was, was lucky. I tried to hit him. I missed. That was a pretty nasty drive by. Now I tried to spot him again because there's nothing more. There's nothing more. And there, there it is leaves me on 18 HP, that was a really fucking lucky shot on the move and here he comes, now he gets with me. what happened, I'm now shot uh, an HE now I'm left with 1 HP and this is where he made some mistake instead of trying to what he should have done is to continue the drive-by, drive again and again, hide around here and just wait for me to either abandon the position or for the rest of the game to develop but anyway instead what he does is uh, what uh, he stops, he tries to fake me into operating my tank, I fire uh, heat Round in him and he gets killed by my uh, LED system. So I was really lucky there. I'm now left on one HP. The battle isn't going incredibly well. That LAV just went from full HP to a third of his HP in like a second. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I. I take another shot here, I think from the enemy leopard, maybe. And another shot. 
all of them were and you can see when they are by in front of my thread and you can see here the ERA bricks on the right cheek of my thread are they exploded so yeah now I kind of uh, waste a bit too much time here but I was afraid of getting spotted by the weasel or any pretty much any tank on the opposite hill right there and yeah I kind of sit here I poke I kind of waste a little bit too much time now eventually I decide to abandon this position and go over to, to the, the middle of the refinery and uh, as you can see on the mini map the last spot the last spot of the enemy there was the level 2 and I decided to, I want to thank him yeah nice one nice one pro skills on the way I, for some reason I pretty much destroy every every object on the way I have no idea why pro skills MLG tactics, whatever. And the enemy leopard that I wanted to go for actually abandoned this position and went to kill the rest of my uh, my team. Now, like I said, no first person shoot, uh, no first person view. But I uh, I wanted I wanted to I wanted to shoot this leopard over here. But I was afraid that uh, um, this pipe over here obscured my my shot on him, and I was afraid that I wouldn't penetrate him and reveal my position and get killed, and so I refrained from shooting him. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Back off now. There's two leopards and the weasel versus me and the LED. Actually. Uh, props to the LED to did a fantastic job. I don't know how he survived this entire fight with a weasel on him and two leopards. Played really well. If it wasn't for him, this game would have been lost. And now it's a simple case of he's proxy spotting the enemy leopard and I just put a shot into his side. And comes 573. It's an amazing shot. The leopard. Uh, I think he tries to shoot but he doesn't. I kill him. Here comes the weasel. I try to snipe at him, but I miss. But I, I take a punt. I shoot the ground. Then here, and uh, this is very important. The LV killed the weasel. That's a very important kill. Uh, if you leave a weasel to its own devices, it can it. It can't be good. Uh, it's 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 a sneaky vehicle, very dangerous, very fast, very small, very incredibly good camera rating. And from here, it's a simple case of sniping the other enemy leopard, and that's it, victory. With one HP, I honestly didn't expect to win. So yeah, this is a, I'd say a pretty good game overall. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the damage counter. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that is the Type Ninety Mark Two. Uh, that a nice game overall. Uh, Six thousand, uh, six and a half thousand damage game. Some spotting. I think it's uh, pretty indicative of what this tank can do. It's basically, like I said in the review, an Abrams with a T80 gun. So yeah, is it worth the grind? Well, <laughs> it's the answer is a resounding yes. If you didn't, if you didn't enjoy, if you think, if you thought the first uh, three, four tanks in the tree were boring and uh, underpowered, well, you're kind of right. But uh, 
trust me the grind is worth it this tank is amazing i like i love it it's probably the only tank i uh, uh, the only main battle tank at tier 7 i'd consider keeping well aside from maybe the challenger but the challenger is well it's slow it's uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, flexibility uh, ammo loadout is boring as shit yeah so it's worth the, it's really really worth the grind is it worth keeping well this question is I can't really answer this que uh, this question for you all I can do is point out all of the tanks strong points and weaknesses and make you should make your your own decision if you're a tank collector well you're gonna keep it anyway no matter what I say but objectively I'd say yes it's worth keeping like I said it's it's I'd say a really balanced tank its armor is functional, it's not overpowered, its gun is really really good, Mo really good mobility, top speed, rate of fire, everything. So yeah, anyway guys, this was, uh, this was the review, the Type 90-2, uh, I hope you liked it, it was my um, first ever tank review on anything, World of Tanks, Summer Warfare. Um, also, a quick side note before I forget, all, all of this is subject to change, remember this is the game is still in open beta, everything is subject to change, although even if uh, the, some of the tanks receive some buffs or nerfs or modifications, then it can't ultimately change the core gameplay, so I'm pretty sure a, a year from now the, this tank will play pretty much the same way. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about this tank, if you like it, if you hate it, if you think it's underpowered, overpowered, anything, whatever. Let's talk about the tank, because this is a review after all. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then by all means share it with your friends. Also, like, comment and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in another video.